Welcome back from the desk of low. Now, we're missing one of the other ones, but he's going to pop in real quick right here. Man, if you don't know Middle Finger Music or The Walkers, you just listening to fucking Griselda right now. No offense to Griselda, yo, they dope. And uh, but no man, you know, like, I always say, like, that's always the tip of the iceberg because if you've been following this renaissance since, I don't know, let's say 2016, and if you've been following, like, years before that, if you recognize this individual, you realize he came a long way. So it's only right, like, these middle finger music artists and Walker artists collab. It's kind of like when, like, the Avengers in DC, like, did, like, that crossover collab. It's like your favorite rap superheroes coming together to make timeless music. Man, with, like, this Belushi on God, man. Like, yo, this album right here, man, like, just, just the name just, like, runs off. Because if you've been following Bane Belushi, as you see right here, Mr. Waving to God, still waiting. Um, these two individuals, they're very gifted artists from this generation. Wavy being the producer, Bane being on the lyrics. Bane has a history of being a De Detroit elite MC, running with the likes of Obi Trice, Marv One, Fat Killer, Fat Father, man, D12, man. If you know Bane's Belushi, man, you, you should know, man. We've been documenting this brother since he's been starting the solo career as Bane Belushi, not Shimmy Bango. But man, I'd like to welcome me humble his third time. A wavy second time, you know what he say to the late ones late? Bane Belushi. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Everybody, my man, what's up? No, my man, you know, it's always fun seeing you. It's always a pleasure when players meet. And you definitely one of the top shotters out in the game. Yeah, sir. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. It, that. It's I like to be pleasure, man. <laughs> yeah, but man. Sometimes I do like to talk my shit, though. No, for sure. I'll I toot the horn for you, man. Pause. Not like, you know, <laughs> I'll do it for you. You know what I'm saying? You the man. So, um, coming up, man, yo, I got to ask, yo, um, is it true that, like, you and Wavy, like, decided to do this album during the pandemic? I couldn't remember if you touched upon that last time we talked. Yeah, actually, that's exactly what happened. Um, dead in the middle of the pandemic, um, I met Wavy, you know what I'm saying, through the homie Bub Rock, shout out to Bub Rock. Um, I met him, you know, and we were just talking. Like, we were just, like... Really wasn't even about music at first. We just like generally became, he's a Capricorn. I'm a fellow Capricorn. So we kind of clicked and, and we were just talking, talking. And then it's just like, you know what? We might as well just do a project. We're not doing nothing right now. Like I wasn't doing anything. He always is doing something. Wavy's a very yeah, busy guy. Really so, you know, for him to fit me in and, 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 and get me in, in, in the pocket and lace me, this dude was lacing me. It'd be like, it sent me a batch at a time. And every time it was like, I didn't know which one to grab. So yeah, it was it was a, a, a very fun thing. And we did we did get the, the music and the work going in the middle of the pandemic for sure. Man, because like, you know what they say like about like when an artist like collaborates with like somebody over the internet, it doesn't really sound the same. Like this really sounds like that you guys like sounded like you guys were in the studio together. Like it was hard to believe like, this was like all over emails, but I understand it's the pandemic. No, for sure. But he, he was pretty much hands on. Uh, like, I, I'm telling you, we would wake up. I, I would wake up. We both early birds, eight, nine in the morning and sit on the phone, conversate about how we want this, this song to sound like this. So it was done in separate cities and separate states. But, you know, the vibe and everything was almost like we were together on it. And, and, and when you got two minds that are pretty much on the same page, it's nothing. You're gonna make nothing but good music, no matter what what it is. And, I, and we were both on the same page for sure on this project. That is, yeah, man. Like I said, the chemistry between the Walkers and Middle Finger Music, yo. Like I like when Rim and Catch P collab. Yo, I'm gonna start calling them like Walk Syndicate pretty soon, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yo, I gotta ask, like, when you're doing like the the features for this, like, whose idea was it to include, like, because I know Rim, uh, Catch P, you know, Marvel 1J Classic, but, like, yo, I've never gave, like, Pro Dillinger, like, a chance. I see his name, like, pop, but I, like, never really gave dude a chance till I heard him on your project. So, like, is that something new for you, to include somebody new like that? Yes. Um, that's most definitely. Um, I trusted Wavy because uh, it was just one of those things we, we had a joint. I had a uh, Kane uh j classic um marv one who i chose okay. i chose those names like you know let me get these guys on it so this is a joint album so i can't be uh, selfish 
and be like, I'm going to have all these dudes. Right. We're not putting any input. So, you know, I was like, yo, you got anybody out there that we could put on? Blah, blah. No, let me stop lying. I didn't even say that. He came to me and was like, yo, it's this dude named Pro Dillinger I'm, I'm, I mess with. He will fit the project, just joint the particular record hardcore. He'll fit this. And I trusted him. Like, yo, he dope. I mean, what's the worst? If you get on it, he sound whack. We don't put him on there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As simple as that. But he got on there. And when I heard, I was like, damn, he sound like, he made me sound like the guest appearance, which, you know what I'm saying? Which is pretty dope. So I love it. He killed, he killed the record and it fit him perfectly. Uh, and we sound good together on that record. So. Yeah, that, that was dope. That was wavy. Wavy brought pro into the in the situation. I, I immediately when I first heard him was like, yeah, he dope. He's super dope. Yeah, because I was like, yeah, I'm just like I'm wary of like, cause like I know like no, if you're pro Dillinger, you dope. But like yo, but in my I know Daz Dillinger. So when I see like the word Dillinger at the end of somebody else, yeah, it's like it's like. Uh, but yo, I learned not to do that with names. It's like yo, it's like a cover. You can't like judge a book by its cover. No, that you can't do, bro. Yes, sir. You can't do it, yo. And it came out fire, man. Especially, we out on that one. especially like with you guys like like sending batch and you only like put out 11 you know good like i understand you like you can't like you got to be particular on how you approach like pollution on god because like if, if people have been following like you you guys just movements right now like they know it's going to be some incredible shit i just didn't know like by the time what's this track called one dollar hit like I don't know if you've seen Dragon Ball Z, but let's like uh-huh. watching like I've seen like rappers like go Super Saiyan on stage, but I've never seen like a rapper go like a Super Saiyan by like song seven on a song. I was like, holy shit! Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I was trying to up, find, find the best way to explain that. I'm like, man, like I gotta make it like so so the audience can understand too, instead of be like the technical this and that. Like, like I gotta bring some like new swag to this. Not I don't know. Nope. My bad. <laughs> my bad. I'm just jumping on the yeah, mic. man. Yeah, man, we trying to kill the word swag. Yeah, you know what uh, I mean. On kill Twitter, it. fucking, if you use your merch, or maximum swag, just please unfollow me right now, please. Oh uh, shit. Um, yeah. But with you, like, I understand. Like, we were talking earlier about like the DJ to DJ, and like, yo, that's like for the people who like are actually wanted to know, like, that's you. Yeah, that's me, man. That's my uh alter ego. You gonna be hearing more from DJ, DJ the DJ. And upcoming projects, I'm going to jump on some middle finger stuff, man, and talk my ish, you know, try to take it back, man, try to take it back to the essence with, with that, you know, give you that vibe, you know, hey, DJ to DJ, shout out to him, man. <laughs> that pop off, because like, I wish I had like, like the technology to do this, but when I seen the cover to like Belushi on God, mm-hmm. I was like, it kind of gave me like a throwback of, you remember that show, The Boondocks? Yes, I remember The Boondocks, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yo, I wish like like somebody out there would make like five minute shorts of like you and Wavy just talking shit and then like adding like a little bit of music like at the end and so like people's like, yo, I like that right there. What is that? Yeah, that's fire. That would be fire. That would be fire. Yo, cause when and I- that's what I yeah. Oh, no, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead, bro. I was just agreeing with you. I was just strictly agreeing. Yeah, that would be super fire. Cause when I seen the cover right there, I was like, man, like, I don't know who did the cover for that. Uh all right, if you want to shout him out, that's okay too. But man, yo. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Dusty Doodles, man. Oh, Dusty, did the, did that. Oh, Dusty, you know yeah, Dusty did that, man. Shout out to him, man. He killed the cover. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love it, man. Yeah, yo, and, and 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 everybody else loves it too, man. So, shout out to Dusty Doodles. Yo, that's you crazy. I mean? Yo, how like this little underground? Well, I don't want to say it's like it's expanded now because I'd be seeing Dusty in my comments, and I was like, you just said, I was like, oh, shit, I don't know if Dusty did that, yo. Yeah, he did, man. Oh, shit, okay. Dig so, him up. One of the things I wanted to know about this project now too is where it's like lights, camera, action now too. Like, I like how like an artist who takes his craft seriously doesn't end his album with bullshit. Like, it's like actually saying something at the end, but like. How do you choose something like that for like your ending? Because like the the beat is just like it just grabs you in it, and when you hear you rhyme over, it's like, yeah, he, man, you did this one. I'm gonna be honest with you. More so for like albums, being this was supposed to be an EP, even though we end up getting a lot more joints on there. Um, Lights, camera, action wasn't even made to be an outro. It just had that feel. You know what I'm saying? Once you sat there with everything, when well, once we got to the point where we was like, okay, these are the records that are going to make this project. And then we started putting the puzzle pieces together. 
lights, camera, action just happened to be an outro. And the intro was made, was the last record, which was weird, was the last record made for this this project, for uh, Belushi on God. That was the very last record. And I was just like, boom, this is it. And Foul Mouth picked that one. I was going through some wavy beats. He was like, bro, this beat right here is your intro. So I listen to it. I was like, all right, cool. I got you. Give me 30 minutes. I'm about to write it. 30 minutes, boom. Yeah, give me 30 minutes, man. I got it. Yeah, so we knocked that out. So it was a very fun, pro- fun project. Because it, it literally, it, it was like I, I, I knocked out so many joints very quickly. Then we had like a dead period. Then I knocked out some more to add to it. So it was just a very cool project to put together, man. Uh, get some different vibes from a different area, from Wavy. And um, yeah, that's what you got, Belushi on God. Yeah, I like how we didn't have to wait like two years for like the fall. Because like, like the time like between, like cause you can see the growth from like Adventures to Rudy. And mm-hmm. you said you were coming. I was like, "Oh, are you coming like like right like right after?" No, I'm 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 putting out records. The next one, which is untitled, uh, I was talking to Farmoff about. Hopefully, we'll drop before the end of the year because I want to I want to put another one out before the year's over. And this one would be to be produced entirely. Now you know, wavy. You know, East Coast. I had to go out to the West Coast to my man. Um, Ike Tyson, young monster producer out on the West Coast that California love, man. So I, I got a Midwest producer for Rudy, East Coast, Wavy, Ike Tyson to end the year off. So hopefully y'all see that, man. I'm, 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 I'm aiming for October, but I'm going to start recording that sometime next week. So the quicker I can get it done, the quicker I can get it out to the people, the public. Oh, yo, see, like, I never said, I don't think an artist did that from, like, East, Midwest, and West as, like, a project for each year, because, like, I know people, like, do, like, the, like, MC at the East meets West, where DJ, mm-hmm. nobody, I don't think I ever did what you just did. No, I, I covered, I mean, I guess if I would have had somebody from down South, I would have had everything covered for the whole year, but I was blessed to uh, meet this individual named Ike Tyson, I'm gonna keep saying his name, he spells it weird, though. It's, he spells Ike E I no E Y E K E Tyson, and this okay. dude is he's a monster, man. And and and, I, and he's a monster on the beats. I can't even front. Like I told him, I was like, "Yo, you're gonna be like out of here when everybody wants to hear your flavor." He's an incredible producer, and I think he's really gonna uh, take off like very soon, like very soon. Ike Tyson, man, out of the West Coast, man, look out for him. So I gotta ask, like, like if you had like a doubt, because like they say you never know who's listening, and I and I tend that to be true, but like, mm-hmm. like let's say like I'm, like let's say like somebody like Metro Boomin would just like hop in your DMs. It's like yo, I fucks with you. I've been watching you since 2018, and I think that I can help you take your sound not to the next level, but I want to add a new flavor to your career. Would you say yes or no to a Metro Boomin EP? I would say, I would say yes. You know what I'm saying? Because the end all being, I tell the people that are close to me all the time, you could do stuff, don't mean it's going to see the light of day. It's not going to hurt to hear what he has to say or hear what music he has. Because ultimately, I could always be like, you know what? I'm straight on this look. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But it, it doesn't hurt to sit down and kick it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And see what we can do or see what he's talking about. Yeah, that don't hurt. You know what I'm saying? That don't hurt just because he's from a whole different genre of music. Don't mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be like, oh no, you support da 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 da. Nah, man, we're gonna get it popping. If it's work, it work. If not, we straight. But if they're a real producer though, they won't be like they can able to make because like every producer out there who says like they're from the chat, like I can make all the music. I just choose to make you know traps or like. I think like if some of these like bigger name producers just like dip into the underground, like uh, how I don't want to say like big because he came on 2010, but like how Tyler mm-hmm. the Creator got so inspired by like Griselda with his newest album. Dude, and a lot of dudes don't say it, man. That album tough, man. Minus the oh, you little, you know, okay. You know, I, I rock with it, man. That like beat wise, I was like, yo, this shit is insane. It was, you know, he got bars that's questionable. He got questionable bars on there, you know, but he should. He's <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You, you got gay. You want to say some shit. 
Yeah, well, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't know nothing about that. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, I mean, I heard the album and I was like, yo. And I was like, a lot of these hip hop dudes was quiet though. It was like a lot of people that I seen wasn't supporting Tyler. Like, this shit was hard. And I was telling motherfuckers like, yo, this shit hard. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't got no problem with what he do. You know what I'm saying? Behind closed doors or nothing like that. Is, but his shit was tough. Is 42 Doug from Detroit? Yeah, he's from Detroit, from what I understand. He is from Detroit. Yeah, because I, I can't tell you what block or nothing like that, but yeah. He's oh, no, no, I don't expect that. No, I'm good. Oh, yeah. I was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah he, no, but no, he's from here, though, man. He's from here. Okay, yeah. Because, uh, man, like, even, like, with, like, Bowley James and the Alchemist, girl, that's what I mean about, like, Detroit, man. Like, Detroit, it has, like, there's a meme out. I don't know if you see it, but it's, like, a, it's a fist holding a mic. It's, like, Detroit is home to the world's most scariest MCs. And it's oh, like, wow. yo, like Detroit got some killers like that all lit. Like, like even like I like how like an OG like Trick Trick, his new one like Element or however you say, yo, yo, Trick Trick, yo, still got it, man. Oh no, for sure, for sure. And a lot of us, that's like you would call elder statements, elder statesmen in the city of Detroit, still have it, never lost it. It's just all about us continuously force feeding people this music. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it's just like what everybody else was always saying. I don't know who was saying it, but I remember I picked that up. They were saying like rock and roll dudes can go to their like 80, 90 without no snickering about, oh, these too old to do blah, blah, blah. But hip hop dudes will do it. You know, oh, he's old. He's this. They know it's music. You know what I'm saying? Our music never gets old. You know, if, if it's whack, it gets old. But if it's dope music, you know what I'm saying? It's dope, no matter how old the person is doing it. You know, and, and for right. hip hop, we always, yeah, we always get criticized no matter what it is. And I think we're the only genre of music where the participant is like, you can't make, you get, you get uh, put in a box. Like if I came on the first song you heard about me was Loving a Woman. You automatically gonna be like he does love songs. Yeah. So next time when I come out and, and put out a gangster record or something, I can't do it because the first couple times you heard me, I was talking about a woman. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is the only genre of music where they do that to us, man. Like you can't be like water. You can't do everything. You only have to be one thing. If they know you for this, you gotta do this. If you're not, you're fake. You know what I'm saying? You're not what you. You know what I'm saying? So if that narrative changes, man. It'll be a lot better for hip hop for sure. All right, so Wavy just joined us in the house. <laughs> I'm just over here trying to figure this shit out, man. I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> yo, yo. So when I was talking to Bane, Wavy, yo, um, I was talking about the album and how you guys did this during the pandemic, though. Um, but now that you're here, um, yeah. What made you want to work with Bane? I mean, it was just like it was all in. in it was all in good faith, man, because we always had like, you know, like kind gestures as gentlemen along the way and, and through mutual um, um, individuals and, and people that were connected with like, we, you know, that's how we built, you know what I'm saying? It was very, it's very it was organic because we, we ended up just chopping it up really like before we actually commenced the album, we just really started just, just you know, kicking, you know, kicking it on the phone, just, just shooting the shit, cracking jokes or whatever, you know? Talking mm -hmm. shit. You know I told saying? them early mornings talking about the Mandalorian and shit like that. He used to school me on the Star Wars <laughs> and all that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man. So I it, was, be, it was dope. Yeah, man. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like, hey, like, here's some beats, here's some rhymes. We knew that's what it was, man. But it was like, but it was just things that, you know, that just, you know, that just got it like organic in a way that made the album actually happen. And, and it was done in timely fashion. Yeah, it, We actually had so much room to like, you know, I don't want to jump too much around, like, but we had time to like add finishing touches and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was, yeah. uh, was talking to Bane about like the guest that you were choosing now too. And he told me that you were the one who brought in like pro Dillinger. So I got to ask like, like when you heard like a Marv one, like tear one of your beats up, like yeah, what was your reaction when you hear like, like two half of the fat killers on like one of your beats? Well, shit, like, motherfucker, shout out to them, man. Like, they slid on that shit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, for me, like, 
I give respect where respect due, and I always, always, I like I told Bang when he went to go and um do like yo, we'll get my man's to jump on it. So I was like, yo, go ahead by all means, you know. I trust his word, and then show sure enough, they delivered, you know. Yeah, because so Bang, Bang was saying like you guys like it can't be all just like the artist like you the producer has to have like some input too, but uh, you guys are both Capricorn, so yo Bane, you're December uh like you close. Yeah, I'm January 10th. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, because yep. uh, Wavy is uh, 1224. Yo, because that mm -hmm. album, yo, you can just remember that album. It's like, yo, that's your birthday, too. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. ironic. Yep. That's, that's ironic that he's a Capricorn, too, man. Yeah, you know, like, 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 me, you know, me and him, it's like, it's just natural energy just bringing, well, mm -hmm. I'm not a Zodiac head, but it's just weird how shit just works, you know? So, like, between you two, because I know, like, Bub Rock, um, I don't know if you did the Metal Finger Trophy, the one that was on Catch P's album now, but, like, whose idea between you two is to put, like, Rim and Catch P on the same track? Like, I told Bane, I'm about to start calling these brothers Woo uh, Walker Syndicate. <laughs> Yo, yeah, go, go. I, I don't know, you want to get that? No, you got it. Oh, well, it was, it was, it wasn't even, like, it, it kind of happened organically. Until today, speaking with you, I didn't realize how much history Rhythm and Catch got. Yeah. So it was almost like the hip hop gods made that happen. Because I had Catch verse first. And then when I heard it, the record, I was I knew Rim was gonna be on, on, on Blue Show God no matter what. Yeah. I didn't know what joint. And then I was just like, yo, I could put him on this one. Not even thinking like the history that him and Catch got together. So that kind of worked out lovely. Like, cause I like, cause it'd be like you or like Bob Rock that would have them like on the same track together too. And like, that's what I mean. Like that, that chemistry of like middle finger music collaboration. That's what I mean. Like, it's like, yeah. you don't get that. And especially like, like what I was telling Bane Wavy too, like it, this is all over the internet and it sounds like it was in person. So like, like, how do you like get into like, like, do you guys have to have like video chats like this, like great beat, and then Wavy will get into the beats, or he would send you the bash, and then you guys would chat up first? I'll send, I'll send through text or email, like, and then there'll be a discussion right after that because they'll probably, you no, know, like, they'll probably, hit, like, even well, Bang, well, I'm gonna talk about me and, me and Bang. Like, I'll send them, I'll send them emails, and then he'll be like, oh, this one, this one, and this one so far, you know, like. So we'll build off for like two or three at a time and just off of each, I, I would look like it. I'll look like every pack is like a set that, that leads up to the, like the next two to three tracks. Cause mm -hmm. I think I sent about, I sent about a few packs to you, right? Man. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. He said, he said the gang, he said the gang of beats, man. And just like he said, I'll just go through them and then just hit him up and we'll talk about it. And then he's just like, yo, I'll be in there Thursday and then I'll send it to you that night or the next day. And then that's how we were rocking. Mm -hmm. So, Wavy, like, because like, I know Foulmouth, like, uh, mixed the project, though, but, like, who did the track placement for this? You mean the sequences? Yeah, like, from, like, I, 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 two. like, I would have to say that's Belushi. Oh, okay. Don't take, no, nah, don't take, all right, I'm not taking the, all the credit. I, I, I say, say it was absolutely. a I, I say it was a collective, man. It, it was, was a collective, collective. But but like but like who be told it and it's and it's and it's nothing, you know, it's no biggie. It's just I would just mm. say like on some shit, like since I'm not in that state per se, like it'll be it'll, you know, it'll make more sense, it'll be more logical that that it had went down that way, you know what I'm saying? It's like I had like to be honest with you, I have like you guys have like extensive knowledge on on as far as like sequencing albums and at least you it's, it's not like something that's brand new so i you know i trust i trust the artists i work with you know like if they need to sequence it they'll, they'll do it they have like so they have a vision too you know what i'm saying all i did was just made the layout for them to just you know bring their vision to life so do you guys plan on doing music video for any of the singles off this because i noticed it's only on Bandcamp right now right yes. now yes yes we we were uh, currently working on that situation man i had a hiccup in my in my in my personal life uh i'm not gonna get into but we're gonna get all that we're gonna get all that going uh shortly shortly for sure okay yeah because like yo i'm gonna have to holler at dusty about doing that animated video for you guys because yo it just like yo he nailed that cover and like when i was telling bane uh wavy like yo it just reminded me of like 
like a boondogs vibe if like you guys would do like little anime shorts talking shit and then the music would be at the end your people would be like yo i like that song it's like yo that's pollution on god yeah yeah i you know i like i like the artwork for that man you know you know what to be real with you and, and like shout out to the homie bub rock too man because he he kind of helped give a, like some inspiration on the on the visual as well for the for for, for the cover you know, like he, he shot he shot the idea and then, you know, I carried it out and sought out the artists and then, you know, Dusty Doodles and then we got that shit going, man. So, it, and it came out, it, you know, it came out to be like good imagery, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it was very subtle, but I feel like it, it can be timeless, man. Something you can slap on a t-shirt or some shit <laughs> or a poster. <laughs> you know, even you know like I mean? the back cover too, it's like, you know, I like how they, he nailed, like even like when you look at the track list and now too, it has you guys even animated on the back cover too. It's like, yeah, that's like, it shows out and like it meshes with the music now too, because like by the time one dollar hits now too, I was like, God damn, yo, like, woo, like that's my joint off that track right there. Yeah, yeah actually bro. match. Actually match. Thank you as well, man. Oh, you're like, okay, okay. So, um, yo, Bane, when you guys were talking back and forth, did you ever, like, tell Wavy, he's like, yo, I want you to go find a bottle of pop-up and, like, make me some beats on pop-ups. Oh, shit, no. You because, uh... That shit get me. I don't know. Yeah. Headaches. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about to say, a lot, of, a lot of my friends look at me like, why do you do what you do? Like, they don't be really like, feeling the pop up so... Yeah, that, uh, I, yeah, definitely not. Just listen to the name of that shit. <laughs> yeah, they be like, they be trying to get me off of it. So anything they, they be, pop yeah. off don't need to be in a in a human body anyway. <laughs> oh wait, I, I have to oh. ask because like. Cause like sometimes like when a producer and artist like click right there, like sometimes you want to like come into each other's zone. It's like um, cause I heard a story about uh who was somebody did a, I think it was. Uh, uh, fuck it was Michael Jackson or somebody. Somebody did acid, and he's like, "Um, you try acid, and you try do." I, I, I gotta find it out. But they did acid. They made something incredible together. Um, Damn, I gotta recheck that though. But yeah, psychedelic show like they're hit and miss with like artists who experimented because I believe like an artist like an ASAP Rocky can do psychedelics and have like a dope album. But then you have like some other artists who like dib and dab was like, yeah, I don't know if he should be like recorded well on like the mushrooms. I ain't gonna hold you, man. Like most of those beats that I shot bang, like some of those joints, it was around the time when I was doing shrooms. Like, so it was like Oh yeah. Oh yeah, shrooms is fun, yo. I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine like well, making a beat on shrooms. I was in flower yeah. power tree hugging mode. Like I was like, yeah, man, like <laughs> like I was on my shit, like, I was all hype, giving everybody the, the Captain America speeches in the morning. <laughs> oh, shit. Like, that ass, I was like, I was hype, I was like, that's how, man, my line, man, I was, I'm, dude, I was very, like, I'm still am, but like, I always, I always try to motivate, I always try to be on some positive shit. I be having, like, dark moments, but, like, the music stems from, like, positivity and, and driven energy, man, like, that's what it all stems from. You know what I'm saying? Every time I get busy with somebody, as far as the music goes, it, it, it'll be like a time where I catch them with like, all right, let's do this shit, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the projects are still coming, man. Like, projects are still, the, the energy is there. A lot of people is picking up on it. It's like a disease, you know? So, like, there's even, like, tracks now, too, because, like, I know, like, um, Bane, like, never left D. You had that one line. I think it was in the uh, intro or uh, new part. It was one of the lines where, like, when everyone left, I stayed in the D. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So like, I mean that's true. That's super true. A lot of people left uh, Detroit for like Atlanta and stuff like that. But it's not like a diss to them. It's just oh, like no, it's no. stating the fact. You know what I mean? Do you think like if you were to like like to make that move to Atlanta, like instead of staying in Detroit, that your style would have changed, or you like? Because like I like the way like how like if you stay in one place though your style can evolve. Because you went from Shimmy Bango to Bane Belushi in the same place. Like you didn't have to like relocate the change. Like, like no, for sure. No, I, I agree with you. No, I didn't. I just, you know, just had it was time for a change. I, and I think if I went to Atlanta, I would still be, I would I would still be me, I would think. You know what I'm saying? Um, the sound probably would have got a little different because your environment does yeah. kind of come out into your music. 
you know, but yeah, I don't think it wouldn't shit. have changed too much. You know what I'm saying? Well, like even like wavy from like being like from like Florida and then like moving up to Brooklyn and like one of the very first people he meets in Brooklyn is like Rome Street. And then like you see like wavy's like evolution in the game from like producing from like Rim to Bob Rock to Eddie Kane to even like let I think your wavy got a track of fucking A Z. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. See, see, yeah, like that's what I mean right there. Like, like so like how is it somebody coming from Florida? And working with like a legend, like a Bane Belushi, who has his own legacy in Detroit, and then you go work with somebody like AZ. Like, how is that? Like, knowing like you work with legends from like different eras of time, like Detroit, and New York. That that was the initial goal. The goal was to like, you know, I don't want to use this word too too roughly, but I wasn't spreading myself thin. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, you know, I wasn't like when I was trying to like engage people. The you know. From different generations that I that I respect, you know what I'm saying. A lot of newcomers coming up, man. The, the whole point of me being here and doing what I'm doing is to like, is to add on to what the new is, you know. And not only that, like to show respect to my predecessors and you know and get a chance to work with people that I wanted to work with, you know. And if if the time permits, so and a lot of that stuff is happening, you know. Oh, now go ahead. Tell me about. I mean, you know, like it's happening. It's like it's, it's at a good pace. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Like, like I've, I've I've encountered a lot of people I never thought I'd be in a room with. You know, I never got starstruck, but it's just funny how I'm in a room with people that I sat there and I used to like. Wow, like how the fuck did they do this when I was like a teenager, like wondering how yeah. they how they flipped this record, and now I'm sitting here having straight conversations with these guys about music production and shit like that, getting tips from certain guys that people, you know, really look up to, you know? See, I like how you guys, like, you guys ain't thirsty for, like, because, like, you guys work with, like, some of the well-known names, but you guys ain't thirsty to, like, get them on a record. Like, I've never seen Bane, like, yo, Obi, I want to get Obi on a record, or I've never seen Wave. He's like, yo, I need to get Smith and Weston on a record. No one, like, damn well, you guys can, but you guys never do that, and that shows, like, the humbleness now, too. But it also shows, like, the integrity now, too, and I think that's, like, something that's missing in the game now, too, because I notice, like, I don't care who you rap with. If you're dope, you're dope. I don't care who you produce for. If you got dope bees, I'm going to check you out. Mm -hmm. look, at, look at Alchemist, in a way, for example, like, it, look, you look at his track sheet. He works with a lot of great artists, but on his independent runs, he usually goes with the um the underdogs, people that never yeah. that nobody never really heard of. Yeah, you like the hol like hologram, like like that American cheese. Like I've never heard of hologram before, and then all of a sudden, like he drops this like EP of mugs. I mean, oh yeah, my bad, but same shit pretty much though. Yeah, it's like, but and it, and it could work because you know it's all it's like. If you're a mad scientist, man, and you're willing to like experiment to see what is a hit or miss, and you're a risk taker, man, you you know look, that stuff don't bother you. You just you know, you're chasing names, chasing chasing stars and, and rainbows and all that shit. And, and, you know, that shit that shit ain't really good for you, man. I always I was always told never to like chase, you know, chase them stars and chase those rainbows type of situation. Everything that glitters is not gold. Sometimes you just got to like stay in your own lane and just you and believe in your craft, man, because sometimes you just might be as good as the person that you look up to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like everybody can go to the gym too, man, and work out just as much, man. And they can come out with the same results. You know what I'm saying? If they both work at the same pace and, and, and don't stop, I mean, like it'll be the same shit. It's just that somebody beat you to the punch on one thing. Some one person might have went to the bodybuilding competition and one person happened, but both both qualified. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. how I see it. That's the best example I could put it. Did you want to add like, on that or you good? No, I was just gonna add on to that. Just me personally, most of my collabs and most of the people I, I, I deal with is more organic. You know what I'm saying? It's never like we thought about. Like, yo, let's do this. It just kind of happened. And that's always worked for me. And, and, and it's always been a good product that way. So I'm more on the organic tip. You know what I'm saying? With, with, with the situations who I deal with, who I uh, collab with and stuff. So, like, I noticed, like, buffs are, like, 
fish then in the shirt oh, now too. Like, uh, like I gotta ask you, Dane. Like, do you still have your first pair of buffs? No, no, I don't actually. I, <laughs> that's funny. He said that. No, I don't. I don't. I, 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 I lost them. I lost my first pair for sure in a move. In a move, I lost them shits. It's always that way, man. Yeah, so I um, but see me being here, like buffs in there, he, they're big as though, but they have been around them so much, I don't like them no more. I'm more of an aviator guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like a person that live in Philly, man. Their favorite meal is not a Philly cheese thing. I can guarantee. It. If it is, like you just love the fuck out of Philadelphia. No more, you know what I'm saying? My, my old roommates were from Philly, man. I, whenever I used to bring that shit up, man, the motherfuckers used to roll their eyes, man. All type of shit. Yeah. I feel them. So it's just like being around Buzz, like you buffed out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So they nice and all, but it's like shit. I like aviators. Yeah, yeah. Nothing about aviators. They fly too. Yeah, you know, so but big up Cardi's, Cartier and, and, and the buffs and all that, man. The yays, we like to call them. So I don't know if you guys are like are gonna be planning this or if it's even under wraps, but like have like your collective like ever thought about doing like a middle finger and walker collaboration together? Like in like a like a EP like of like your different collabor a collective of artists, like all on like a five track EP. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, go, no, I was about to say I've heard rumblings, but I don't know how true and concrete they are. We just have to see what happens. But I've heard little rumblings here and there, like, well, who knows what ha- like, what may happen in the it's future. It's like waiting for, like, an Avenger movie to come out. It's like, yo, are these guys, like, going to do it? Or is it, like, they're going to tease us? And then, like, one day it's just like, so, yeah, yeah, we're doing this. <laughs> I, I mean, right now, like, shit, I'm low-key putting and slowly putting together a Walker's album, like. Okay, okay. Like, just to put that out there, I mean, like. But like we have to get that out of the way of, um, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Like we need that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, I, yo, I helped this, yo, because I remember Bub was teasing us. He played us that one joint off that Walker's album, and I swear to God, yo, this shit sounded. I'll never forget that beat. So if that beat's on, I'll post that shit. We're like, yo, this is the one I was talking about for like two and a half years. The shit's like, you know what? You know what? To be real with you, the one that you're probably talking about, I'm probably gonna put that on my album. Okay. Which is gonna come out soon. Which is gonna come out soon. <laughs> this is gonna come out sooner. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, a hell of a way to cross promote, bro. You know, like no, nah, not for real. So like, when you're putting that, a, when you're putting a solo album out from a producer, is it gonna have like artists on it? Is it just gonna be like artists and instrumentals, or strictly artists? I was gonna do. I was thinking about that. You know that? Like I was actually was like, you know what? I was. I should do a few like. Nice little extended interludes or, or just some, you know, some beat, you know, some bridge on with beats between songs or something. Maybe it'll fade into the song. Things of that nature, I was thinking of how I should, you know, do a project. But like for right now, I believe this is going to be a straight, like just straight rap and different artists. But I will, but I will actually do something like that down the line. I might incorporate something like that in my project. I already kind of did, but I wasn't trying to too much incorporate too much instrument instrumentation on on the album except for like just the the lyrics on there i just wanted to showcase uh a project a wave of the god a wave of the god project with you know with different artists i i i tend to rock with you know so do you guys have like that particular sound because like you know how like a listen to an album and like near the end of the song the beat would change for like five or six seconds but that like those five or six seconds it's like man i wish like they would have rapped over that like have you guys ever had that happen to a song like that you guys made your own and like went off that man mm. i i know what you're talking about man that, that i sampled a few me personally i sampled something that i heard on other artists albums that nobody really, really rapped on, like you know, like little interludes or yeah, just like intros or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like little, like look, like something that Pete Rock used to do that shit a lot. Hey, but, yo, that's why you, my brother, Wavy. That's who I was thinking in my head. <laughs> you know, Pete you know Rock for real. Do? He does that a lot. You know who used to do that a lot? Um, the the Roots used to kind of do that. Um, fucking yeah. what else? Um, you know who else used to do that shit? Like um, 
The RZA used to kind of like. Damn it! That's, I was just about to say that, but then the different about the RZA, he'd do it. But then you'll hear yeah, somebody on the album, album. Yeah, they put on that on the next Wu Tang dude out. Yeah, yeah like straight it, up. It's like, oh, where that where that beat gonna be on this project? Bomb, yeah, <laughs> yeah, on you this project. We're just bumping. Now, <laughs> first of all, bro, are you drinking a Fresca? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's bright. Oh, I was saying that shit was looking like a Fresca, bro. I'm about oh, to be man. like, shit. I'm like, that's I walked, great in, a, I walked in the corner store. I, <laughs> right. I didn't even pay for this, bitch. I walked, I walked straight inside. I walked straight into the store and just raised it up and let me do, let me run. No, that's why you're the coolest man on the face <laughs> of the earth. Now his looks get free beverages, bro. You see that? <laughs> he walked in like, and You can go back on the footage and see that shit. Yeah, I, I seen it, though. I didn't think nothing of it. I was just like, oh, maybe they have a secret code. He just showed them the bottle. Like, what about that bitch? No, nah, man. The, 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 bod the bodegas and, and corner stores in New York City and my neighborhoods are, are like my, my fucking kitchen. Damn. <laughs> I'm walking most... that bitch and the motherfuckers let me walk out with the car. I go on the, I go on different coffee. They know what it is, man. Like, they know what it is. <laughs> oh, like only he can say shit like that, dog. Like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> they know what it is. He just, you just committed theft. <laughs> he's not the boss up on him. It's, it's all he love. Was, it's all love. He, it's all love. He's, it's all love. He's like, he's so. Like hey, they ain't chase him. It's all good. I guess it must be the kitchen. <laughs> no, he the man, build, you, got, dog. You, gotta build, you just gotta build. You just gotta build a relationship with your aunt. That's all. That's what's up, man. Yo, that's actually a big fat. I remember there was this corner store down at this place in high school. We used to go in there and get just like three cigarettes all the time. And the guy just did not. I think he was on crack, though. But I remember like Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> he was on crack. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, crack was like a big epidemic around 2006. I remember grabbing like cigarettes, like pack. And the guy crack was like, is serious. Yeah, you know, crack mm. was up with, man. Um, but speaking of like actually getting into like your guys' music now too, would you guys consider your music like addictive? Like like something like sometimes you can hear an album and not want to hear it again. But when you hear like something like uh, I gotta keep one dollar, you just gotta go back to it and play like five or six times in a row because it's like that addictive. It's like damn, you know, like how does somebody like make something and fit all the pockets like that and actually hit it like that? But I it all goes down to the mix in the artist and the producer though. You know that I'm. I'm, a, I'm just gonna say this. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. say this. Our our project, me and Bang's project, compared to a lot of projects, our project is not a dark project. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not a dark project. A lot of people are embracing a lot of dark, dark ass music. And yeah, like, I just wanted like to let people know that like, this is summer. I'm just trying. We're, we're trying to like emit like some that. type of good. Good vibes, man. Like because especially no, when we did sure. this project, it was definitely during the lockdown. No, for sure. It was definitely for during sure. the lockdown. So it was like the carbon copy opposite of what we was actually feeling on these projects. The something the music brought people to life between me and this guy. You know what I'm saying? The music, uh, you know, build a spirit mm -hmm. up. But like, I just wanted to say that. Like summertime in Detroit. Okay, I see. Cause the I noticed, like, it wasn't, like, because, like, you hear, like, projects nowadays now, too, that have, like, that dark underground tone, but this was, like, more, like, you know, experimental with sounds and, like, yeah, yeah. uplifting. It very yeah. much. I was going to say that as well. Like, the sounds were very experimental. And, and like, even with Bangs with the flows, man, he had, man, he, 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 he I ain't going to say basically, because that's a corny ass, and that's a bad word to use in an interview once again. But, like, are oh, you there? All right, bet. Yeah, yeah. But but Bang Bang had fun. He had fun on that project. You could tell. You could listen to the raps that he said on there, and it was like these are fun bars. And not only fun, they were like they was very direct. They were witty, to the point. It was nothing to wrap your head around, but it was very good. You know what I'm saying? It was mm, like, and, and it was a very fun project, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like it was a very it was a very good rap album to me. You know what I'm saying? And I like on Bane's like projects too, like he's always gonna like show love to like one of his like heroes. Cause like you go back from like, like I feel like ODB, then the Biggie track, and then like the new Pac. It's like, like I wanna know like who's the next one, Bane? Is it gonna be Big L on the next one? Like, <laughs> I don't know, series. man. I don't know, man. I think that might be the end of, of that. If it does, I mean, just cause just, 
Only person I probably missed was probably Pun. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, like a big up to. Um, uh, also, Heavy D, too. A lot of people don't give Heavy D his respect in hip hop. Yeah. But you got to give him his respect, man. At one point, he was running shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you might see some, but, but I don't foresee me unless it just happens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. those, those, those records that, that, that made those, those uh, joints, too, kind of just, they needed to happen. But, yeah. I like how you're gonna if you if you don't continue you leave it at three. It's like what uh Fair Mont did with like the song where he's rapping about a bullet. Like throughout this project, there's three different well it's four now, but there's four different songs like connect them all to this. And like that's what I kind of like what you did with that because it's like it's acknowledging who you because like artists won't do that nowadays. I know it's like 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 that like shout out to Tyler the Creator, but he did not acknowledge ODB's uh first album like that he ripped off like that because it's like that's ODB's cover. He did the, the new album, right? Yeah, yeah. The call me forget lost. Like it's a dope album. Like yeah, we were talking. I, about I fucked with the album. Though. That was blatant. That's a blatant rip off, though. Like the, yeah, yeah. Like that's from thirty six. Did we turn to say thirty six chambers? Yeah, man. I had that album twice, by the way, man. <laughs> Mom did <laughs> the first one. <laughs> Mom destroyed that. It's like what kind of demonic shit is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, nah, man. Like she doused it with holy water and fucking just. Like rip the tape apart, man. I'll never forget it. But like, yeah, man, he just totally ripped off that man's cover, man. But I guess, but you know what? At the end of the day, if you know, these guys are gonna turn around and say, like, oh, I'm inspired by this. I mean, it's been some time. It'll be like yesterday that third, you know, Return of the 36 Chambers came out to guys like us. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but like now it's like these guys, they're coming in, they're a little bit new, kind of, and they're what they all you know they're really paying homage at the end of the day no yeah. saying i just kind of wish he would like put like at the like at the bottom of like inspired by like oh like you know how like uh like a movie would be like inspired by true events but like i wish he would kind of like do that as like inspired by ODB because like dude like that's fucking return to 36 chains yeah well, <laughs> blatant 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 but I but, see you what know? he did with the gangster grills and the mixtape vibe and shit. I'm like, oh, so it kind of, because I remember DJ Drama used to, you know, sh yo, my bad, John Brady, if you ever watch these interviews, but yo, he used to straight up rip off like other artists, like mixtape covers and like put his face on it. <laughs> Damn. Yo I, yo, I strictly remember Jada kiss his face on a Predator uh, mixtape and DJ Drama's in the back like this as Alien. I'm like, that was a lot. That was a lot of mixtapes, man. Uh, like everybody had like the Cash Money vibe, the Cash Money. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and they, yo, <laughs> the motherfuckers used to literally, literally used to put like a Bugatti, like a, a Photoshop Bugatti somewhere, and the DJs in the background like, yeah, you know what I'm <laughs> yeah, that shit is nuts. You know say like in the background. Or shout to Ransom because there's a cover like that. I don't think Ransom like fucking authorized that mixtape, but yeah, there's a cover of Ransom like that. But yeah, so like, how many cuts are like just left on the cutting room floor? Like, how many like 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 how many like songs did Bane like put on there like actually like recording? It's like, yeah, this is dope. But man, it, we had a very good album. song. I think there was one. Oh, only one? What? Yeah, there's only one song that didn't that that we didn't put out. That was that that uh from from the uh album. I fucked up. I fucked up. I'll tell you the story. <laughs> I fucked up. All right, the song, the song is a really good song. The song had Eddie Kane and Bub Rock on it. You oh, know what I'm saying? God. But I didn't I you know, my high ass, I smoke a lot of weed, you know, I smoke a lot of reefer. You know, I, I forgot that I had sold this beat a while back. And, and like I and the person that I sold it to have not used the beat right then and there, but they used it and did a video, did a whole press run, the whole nine. And I'm sitting there like, damn, like Belushi on God didn't come out yet. And this guy's doing all of this. And I'm like, shit, like, so this is what happened. They like jogged the memory into me. So it was like, so I had to like kind of chalk that up. I had to like swallow a whole, a whole shitty pill and, and, you know, talk to this guy about it, you know, because that was like a careless mistake, but like, you know, it was, Luckily, it was just one song, but it was a very, but it was a very good song though. Like uh, that's, a, I think our our version of that song was, was, is way better than what had came out from that other artist, respectfully. Respectfully, 
because you didn't want to have like a Raz Kaz, uh, sorry, Alchemist moment where he did like the Raz Kaz. Re- That's exactly what happened. Yeah, and That's then Jada home sweet it. home, and, and and we gonna make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about that. I like Raz Kaz version too. I actually didn't know. I, I good thing you said that during the verses though, because I was like, oh yeah, yo, Raz did that version first. I remember that. Yeah, he had it first. Yeah, yeah. that beat. Yeah, that we gonna make it beat first. So, because I'm, I'm, I don't know if Bane's been to New York, though, with, like, actually, like, been around, like, actually hearing the Curry's Blast, though, but is it true in New York City, they play We Gonna Make It, like, almost every day out the Curry's in New York? Or is that just, like, a Twitter thing I see? Is that, like, right now because of the battle? No, like, before. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, it sounded like it was BS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, you, did you hear when I walked outside earlier? All I hear is reggaeton. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say you hear you hear more like like uh like reggae, like you say reggae tone or whatever like that, then you would hear that other shit. Yeah, so, man. Can you guys listen to Dipset the same anymore? I never did. I'm be oh, keeping in the buck. <laughs> I yeah, never did. I'll still, I'll, I'll still listen to Dipset, man. I'll still they're a good recording artist. They probably had good performance. I can't listen to her. I'm ready anymore. I just can't. I can't listen See, to that no more because they kind of like walked in there with that with that energy. Like, hey, wow. I'm like, I can't listen to that song no more. You're right. And then that shit was all, it was a time. Like, Dipset was literally a time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't think their music, to me personally, was ever timeless. It was a time. Like, it was motherfuckers that just kind of like, their whole shit was a vibe. There's a way. I don't think their music. I think their 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 persona was bigger than their music. Yeah, it's true though because like you can even tell with the stage presence. Like you can tell when like a group don't because it's like a legendary rock band almost. You can tell when like I don't know who's out there who's like I don't know uh fucking Ozzy Osbourne's crew. Richard, they all get together. <laughs> fucking Yo, mm. I still have the Ozzy Osbourne cadence because that's what it's like. <laughs> mm-hmm. But like. You can tell when a crew doesn't fuck with the other members in the crew. Like Dipset had no chemistry on. Screen. That is a fact. You seen it. You you could tell. Cameron really don't mess with none of them dudes. You know what I'm saying? And that just just it, it came off horrible. Did y'all see? Never. Y'all see when he kicked Styles P in the in the side when mm-hmm. he was in the long mm-hmm. hair? I did. Yeah, yeah, I seen it. Yeah, yeah. Y'all. yeah. That, that verse is, yo, I was expecting like somebody to throw it down. I was like, yo, Freaky Zeke moving too violently on stage. Yeah, he yeah. was, man. I was waiting for Joel Santana's benches to fall out. Man. <laughs> yo, he got the mouth, no no disrespect, but he got the mouth of a fiend. Like, for real, like, he's, like he look like he smoked rocks now. Like, his whole upper shit just yo, little I caved in. That's no, like no. one of the biggest tra- tragedies, uh, travesties in rap that is a Joel Santana. Because I remember this dude was like on the up and coming, and you can see what drug use can do to somebody. It's not only yeah. drug use, low, it's also you got to think, man. A lot of these cats, man, they come from nothing, and you give them everything, bro. Yeah, you know That's what like I'm Codeine, saying? Man. Yeah, Codeine you will do that to you too. You ain't got to work for shit no more, like that grind, that everything, you know. That's the death of a lot of rappers, man, is them actually achieving what yeah. they set out, their goals to set out. Now it's like, what do you work for after you have everything? Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? I just see that. See, I see, I see crack. the dip set, like, <laughs> still, like, like crack. come back. <laughs> it's a hell of a drug. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I have nothing to work for. I might as well buy all the crack. Still can't believe how bad like locks like work depth set during that battle. No, it kind of made sense that for them to get down on on, on dip set like that. Like it actually makes sense because you think about the joints that they got, they got classics, bro. Like yeah. they, I mean, whether with bad boy or rough rider, they got classic joints, bro. Yo, when they did like the mixtape joints, like the chest to chest freestyle, I was like, oh my god, like and no forget listen. about it. <laughs> yeah, like. Forget about it. And then you kind of forget how dope Jada is, man. You know what I'm saying? You needed nights like that to remind you, like, damn, this dude is. You know what I'm saying? This dude is crazy with it. Like, this dude is hella dope. So, yo, you needed nights like that to realize, like, yeah, this dude is crazy with it. 
there's like top oh um, i think his first three albums went on like the itunes charts with the locks albums like right after that battle i was like I yep. was, so if you guys like were jada kiss would you guys release an album like after getting all that good reception or would you like do what he's doing and just like kind of waiting on it nope you got it he got us he should he should have been recording that week like on some real ish like i would have recorded like went on like quick mode because nowadays, especially when it comes to hip hop shit, it's like microwaves. They it run, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you'll catch, you'll catch a wave, and then that <coughs> wave will disappear in a blink. So if I like, if I was in my shit, like, I mean, hindsight is always 2020. You know what I'm saying? You should have yeah. had something to, to drop. Other if it was just I'm gonna cut a three joint something something, and you know what I'm saying? Like he should have did something. Uh, but he. I'm pretty sure he made some money though. I'm pretty sure he oh, did yeah, some to yo. make some money during that during this time. Like, I, I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, Khan like literally like right after a uh, battle, they went to Atlanta to record that Kanye West. It's actually on the internet. It's called Jesus is Lord of J Electronica, and you can tell that was right after the verses when you listen like to the locks verses on that song. Mm-hmm. The Jada was just in that zone. Like I've never seen a rapper like fucking like play. Like, you know how, like, Kobe was in the zone, as people say? I've never yeah. seen a rapper, like, be in the zone like that. Like, I remember after he dropped the Big E freestyle, he made Cameron rap to get him, girls. No lip syncing. Yeah, that shit was just bad. You could just tell that the locks rehearsed and that Dipset just showed up just to play records. They, they, they had the, the clothes. They had all, everything but the element of lyrics. Yeah, that's where they messed up, and then there's nobody on their team that could rap with Jada, though. You know why? People was just they was just comfortable, and they normalized the bullshit. You know, you know how long you know how long that people like them, like Dipset, it's probably been catered to just do performances like that. Mm-hmm. Like that was acceptable. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. That was acceptable. <laughs> we ain't never gonna go see a Dipset show after seeing that. Either that yeah. like, or 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 either they underestimated the whole versus battle and the fact that they thought it was gonna be like the other people's shit that was prior to the other versus battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you gotta remember, they were all lip syncing. They were all lip syncing. Yeah, I agree so with that. Th- maybe they did their research all wrong because they underestimated the unpredictability of the locks. Yeah, I agree with that. I and I mean, if, if you think about it, they should have knew it was going to be a show. They This is like the first verses with all, all, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this audience and shit, y'all put on a show, y'all in the NY. Madison Square Garden out of all places, though. Of all places. Garden. Yeah, the locks was going to show out. They knew how much that meant. It wasn't just going to sit there and just play records. And they what DJ, is- they, y'all, a lot of oh people say Jada God. was the MVP. Yeah, the DJ was the MVP of that night, man. DJ was cutting up during the records. Yeah, like, the DJ was doing his was, job. I yep. mean, like, yep. You know what I'm saying? The DJ was doing his job. I mean, like, shout outs to the DJ, but like, you know, like, I I don't see anything that was super special that the DJ did, but only what he was supposed to do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like no 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 discredit from him, but like on some shit, like, but the the locks on the other hand. They definitely came prepared, man. They know, oh, yeah. you know, not everybody was trying to outshine. When they see one brother was in the zone, the others held them up, and they and they and they had his back the whole way through, and, and that's what happened. I think it's because like like the passing of DMX, and I noticed like when X passed, like like the locks was always like you know well received though, but I noticed like when X passed, like a lot of people started to revisit Rough Riders, and they were a lot of to like revisit the locks and. I think like they knew like like how special that night was good. Like you got my- Michael Buffer like introducing you guys. And yo, how do you like Michael Buffer is like telling you to come out and Depth doesn't even come out like when you have like a legendary spokesman like that. Like they just it just showed like they didn't really care. Mm-hmm. With the locks though, they knew like they knew like yo, this is for a legacy act. Mm-hmm. But everyone they actually they like, actually they actually made a mark that, that, that night, man. They actually did, once again. Because even back then, when they had that big battle with, with, with um, Bean Siegel, man, oh, I, yeah, felt yeah. Like that battle, I felt like that battle was better than Nas's and Jay-Z shit to me. 
around that time. Yeah. Because it was happening around the same time. I felt like the lock shit was more, it had more substance. They had more wordplay in their bars. It was more funny. Like, it, it, like all the battle raps they had was funny as shit. A lot of their battle raps they had, they was going at each other. Like, mixtape after mixtape, I was listening to these guys going at each other. Yeah. Like, no, that's real. And like, I guess that never really had, like, beefs like that. Like, I don't they beefs is like, real street beefs though. There was never no rap shit. Yeah, like 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 French Montana wasn't really a rapper back yes, then. This was real beef. Yeah, like look at what happened to Max B. Mm-hmm. Yo, know, I yo know, like, we, you know, my bad, Jimmy, but we did not need Purple City Bird Gang. You you could have let Joel Santana do the Wessel song. There right, was still gonna... there was still there was still in all of there was still in all of. Max B joints. So I, I noticed. I was like, "Oh, now so now they, now they playing the nigga joint in jail, bro." While he's in jail, yeah, because they Jimmy even, knows. Jimmy knows. He sees the impact that Max had, and he probably feels like, "I found this guy." Yeah, I think. I think the battle probably would have been a better. Locks would have still won that shit. But if the Dipset would have actually got together, if they actually had all of Dipset. Not just the three the motherfuckers that everybody okay, knows. Man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, they were it was diplomats. Crowd. Yeah, if it was diplomats instead of Dipset. It'd have been it have been a lot closer. Because I'm not even going to front on Dipset. They got joints. But they didn't do none of them. They didn't do none of the records. Look, to me, that yeah. they had them popping. Like, losing weight. If Cameron does losing oh, weight. Oh, God. Yeah. No, that, that was the one. That was one of them. I was like, damn, Cam, you ain't do that? Cam should have went. Cam should have pulled out a bunch of joints from SDE. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But like, it's like what you guys they under because they probably think like we're gonna go in there and do our anthems. Not like they're like no one's gonna do one on our care tracks. But like, they wanted, they wanted to see. You know what? They underestimated because that I would. Cameron should have definitely recalibrated and been like, yeah, nah. We, we we we're doing we're doing like majority SDE. I'm going to my classic joints. I'm going. To, you know, like fuck all the Purple City Bird Gang shit and all that. Yeah, like that shit was irrelevant. But she got to hit because these guys were pulling out shit from the old back. They're pulling out hot ninety seven yep. freestyles on these motherfuckers. Yeah. And Cam, Cam got some killer, <clears throat> some killer ass freestyles with DMX. Him, DMX, and Cannabis when they was coming up back in the day on the mixtape circuit. So if yeah, did that. He would have shut them down. Yeah, that, yeah, that, he would have shut them down for sure. Cam probably don't even know the lyrics that though. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> no, that's real. No, that's real. Yeah. Did you guys hear uh, they were going to bring out Mace when they did a DMX track? But that didn't happen. Uh, it would have been, duh. If it, first of all, with everything Styles was doing on stage to antagonize them and Jada was antagonizing them, it would have been a brawl. If that Mace doesn't... would have came out, <laughs> it would have been a brawl. It would have been a straight up brawl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yo. Like, it would have been so much tension. They would have they messed up their money. Yo, know, because at that breakfast club that the locks did, they said like they're gonna bring out Mace and then uh Envy's like, yeah, they probably would have beat up Mace. <laughs> yep, yep, I agree with that. Uh, because they were being embarrassed, like they would have took it out on him. Yeah, they would have took it out on Mace. <laughs> no, because when, when Jada it out on him, man. when Jada took what's the name bandana and threw it down, I was like, oh, yeah. yo, the fuck? And then they calling you pussy, you bitch. Like they're like, yeah, we don't play like that. Nah, they like, got you know him, what I'm they, saying? Nah, Styles and Jada got him in the bully sandwich. Then they slapped the bandana off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I thought it was gonna go down then. Like yeah, they, they, they talking about that. They, that's what I thought. I'm like, oh, it's going down. They postured up. They postured up on him like they was about to take his cornbread. And then, yep. and then, and then that there was a whole lot of cornbread. Like there's a whole lot of is that your cornbread energy on that stage that night? A lot, a lot. Is that your cornbread? Nigga? Yeah, like they were there. Yeah, the locks were straight up aggressors, and I was peeping it. And you can see Cam lost his cool, obviously, kicking fucking yeah, Styles P. Get my gun. You get your gun. And then the when he, yeah, go go ahead, wave. Nah, the motherfuckers, you, know, you, you, seen, you seen LeBron when he went to the finals for the first time and when he lost the series and he kicked <laughs> the garbage pail? Yeah. That's what the motherfuckers did that night, man. Like, yeah, it was. The motherfuckers, when they went back into the to the locker room, they kicked the garbage pail over. They were like, fuck. They threw a towel on the ground. 
Yeah, them motherfuckers lost their cool and shit. It was just all, you know what I'm saying? Cam like, I'm going to talk now. Go ahead. I told you, you could talk. Talking to Jay like, you lost your cool, bro. Yeah. Then they you got booed trying to freestyle. Like, it was a bad night for them boys. Yeah, I, they, I they, went, they, went back, they went back to the dressing room, slapped over the complimentary chicken wings. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, telling you, boy. Jones got age. COVID after. Right. Now, he caught COVID that night, Jim Jones. He caught COVID that night. Yeah. That was he, literally two weeks ago. You can see him point he caught COVID when the guy put the chain on him. No, I'm done. I'm done. That's funny. <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah, funny. No, nah, he caught COVID when he jumped in the crowd to get his fucking ring. Yes, he dropped the <laughs> ring. That's when he caught that V. He caught V at that moment. That's How when about he knew that? he fucked up. Batman got nothing on me, nigga. <laughs> so yo. So with you guys, like, would you guys ever like consider like like if you guys were to see like an underground versus, like who would you put for the first underground versus? Uh, I don't think that can happen. Like, I don't think an underground versus would ever occur. Well, let's say like somebody like um like somebody like who like like a Scott. If they, if they were alive, if 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 this nigga was alive, I would love to see MF Doom versus Immortal Technique. Wow. Oh, oh, that's somebody you. Wow. I always I don't think Mortal Technique gets the the proper props that he deserves because of that one song that white kids always bump is like, oh, you ever hear Dance to the Devil? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, shut the fuck up about that song. He has many other <laughs> records, man. Yeah. Yo, dance your ass out of here. You know, like, you dance your ass out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck out of here. No, he's, he's right, though. There's always be that song, man. I'm like, yo, yeah. it's the, that's not the only song he has, you know. I made a lot of money off of that song, though. I bet. I think he has this one song of Chino XL. Like, that's another person. Like, people always like, they're like, they never. I think he has an album. He raps his ass off. Yeah. But they always reference his 90s shit, though. Nah, he really could rap, rap. Like, Chino, like, from what I remember about him, it's just that they look at him and he, they'll be like, yo, this guy, you know, this guy look like, like, like the Green Ranger on steroids. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how to put it, but my man. No, I know. I, I get it. I get that. I get that though. My man's look like the Green Ranger on steroids, and, and people would, like wouldn't give him a chance because they don't know the history about him. But like the guy could rap, rap, and he's been rapping. He been rapping with Pac in them. You know what I'm saying? So were you guys actually like like making Belushi on God a sin and selling in the world for the here and now too? Like, would you guys like continue doing this, or it's like you guys are gonna see? how time progresses over time. Because I noticed like an artist and producer can have incredible chemistry, but they'll never do another album again. Cause they don't want to wreck, they don't want to like try to redo the first one if that makes sense. No, I, so, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I, it would have to make, I mean, I, I'm definitely going to work with Wavy again. That's oh, like, yeah, that's the album, that's, Yeah, of course and singles, but I mean like a full, like body of work, like a Belushi on God, too. Belushi's still on God. There you go. But yeah, Belushi's still on God. You know what I mean? Like it could work, but it would have to be more if I hear like I already have the cover in my out. head already. I already have the cover in my head. There you go. You got him working. You got him working. <laughs> okay. That's why he the God. You know what I'm saying? He's always on point, bro. Yeah, man. And For fucking sure. no. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, like, have you guys, like, ever, like, told, like, one of you guys that's curious about the other one before now, too? And, like, they actually, like, yo, I fucked with doing that, too, bro. And we're going to work. It's just not right now. Because, man, I would I would love to see, like, Bane Belushi and Rome Streets, man. I would, or, like, even, like, I, I still want to see Bane Belushi and Ty Ferris. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people want to see stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be coming in the future. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things that I haven't done that I need to get my my situation going to get. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there's going to be some nice records coming out in the future, man, for sure. Has somebody ever sent you, like, old footage of you battling before? And it's like, yo, like, can you send me that? Like, has anybody ever did that, like, randomly to you, Bane? Like, they, like, found old footage of you battling? It's like, yo, I, I still have this. No, nah, man, I get people sending me old footage of, like, old Detroit performances. I got somebody just sent me some fat killer stuff uh mm. last week. 
uh, footage from uh, like me and Obi, like in Italy. I got footage and stuff like that. People like remembering my face because I changed my name. So yeah. they can't go and look for Shimmy Bango and send me stuff. So they just oh. kind of like see, like they'll see like my face on something and they say bang. Then they'll hit my DMs and be like, yo, I got that footage when you was in blah, blah, speed. And I'd be like, send it to me. Then, you know, stuff like that. So not too much old, old stuff. I love to see old, old stuff. And yeah. most of the time, I be tripping about the old stuff I see because I be like, sometimes I be feeling like I changed how I rap, but I'm still filthy, drunk, and high on all the shit. Like, like speaking wise, it's almost the same. So it's weird. I stayed true to myself throughout the years. Like I seen like uh, when Ty Ferris posted uh, this picture of Nems battling in 04. I was like, Nems, like their fucking life, man. I was like, oh shit. Man. Yeah, he was big time. He was he used to be in the city a lot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Messing with proof and bizarre. Well, that's when he was like slim. He was like skinny as shit. Right. He don't even look like he that. come out here. Like, yeah, he was fucking with us heavy out here, man, on that battle shit. I was there actually, that shit that uh he posted. That's the, yeah, that's yeah, what I, time, I was there. I was there in the background because right. Marv Marv battled that night too. I tried to inspired that question because I remember he was posting, it was like oh four. I was like, damn, I wonder how much of like all it because like when because back then, like Internet wasn't as accessible. Like you couldn't get it on your phone like how we do now. You can literally yeah, not at all. Yeah, not at all. Like yeah, I bet soup has a lot of footage of you. Yeah, I bet, I bet. But you know, I wasn't a battle rapper though. Not even I would. Battle. I would. I would rap at the freestyle shit. I oh, you just talking about like rhyme? Not even rhyme. It's like classic. Like oh, just like oh history. yeah yeah no for sure, for sure. I know it's a lot of footage and stuff like that, man. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, um, so, so it's crazy. I, I know I ask this a lot because I bring it up to Bane, but yo, Wavy, like, did you know Bane's past before you started working with him, or did you kind of have like a good idea of what it was? I mean, I had an idea, okay, I had an idea, and like, do, like, do you still know, like, like, do you still know, like, what, what he's done in the past and whatnot? No, actually, I got a, I got, I got the rundown between him and I believe Bub, Bub gave me a rundown on, on the history as well. Okay, yeah, you're you know, like, like he put, like I got educated on Bang Belushi. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a good education. Yeah, before, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but, but the thing, but the thing was, is just that, like, I was being educated on him along the way because <laughs> I. Mm -hmm. I I was more like told like, hey, the thing that how I was introduced to him, it was more like work with this nigga. He's dope. Oh. All right. I don't fuck all the, the accolades and all the other the accolades came along when we was like already on track number three. Yeah. Some shit like that. It, it, like if, if if you want uh, truth be told, that's how that's how it actually went down. All right. Or, yeah, that's actually yeah, he's absolutely correct. And that's something that I, I we didn't bring up earlier. Our friendship grew during with each song we created. Each song was a phone call. You know what I'm saying? Another phone call to make, another conversation to have. And we kind of got tighter as this project was being put together. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were cool, but we, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is my man's right here. Like, this is my guy. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of dope. I finally, like, really, after he said that, I'm really thinking about it. Like, yeah, he's right. Okay, see, like, I see, that's what I wanted to know, too, because I've known Bane from, like, his, like, you know, fat killers who's coming to dinner and, like, you know, his, his solo work at Shimmy Bangle, but, like, to hear, like, he's nice and work with him and then find out, like, who he is, like, later on, it's like, wow, like, see, that's what I like about hip-hop now, too, it's, like, it's not based on, e like, a lot of it's based on ego, but if you put the ego to the side and it's like, yo, he is dope, and then you find out after, it's like, yo, like, I go, oh, like, like, like um, remember somebody schooled me on Thurston Howell and they're like, yo, we should interview Thurston Howell. I'm like, I don't know that much about Thurston Howell, but what I did do, like, you know, I had a conversation with him and he's telling me to research. I'm like, you used to do that in the story? Like, Jesus God Christ. God damn. I'm like, like, I was like, most I celebrated boost low lives. But, um, I'm going to shout out to Thurston anyway. He's a good brother right there. So, with you guys now, too, like I said, I want to hold up most of your time now, too. There's no... Uh, physicals or anything I've seen of coming to this, right? 
No, not as of yet. Okay. Because you know he's always always like one or five or five fans that just never stops asking like, yo, when's it coming? When's it coming? It's like, okay, like you can clearly see on the page like there's nothing announced. Uh, yeah, man. It's, it will, it will, it will come though. All right. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That like it will visuals, come. all that. Yeah. Like it might, you know, just a little, little bit behind, but things are gonna come along the yep. way. That's you know what I'm fact. saying? Just a little hiccup. Well, it's understandable with the pandemic happening now too, and like people don't understand, like like that COVID still. There are people like probably like I do not want to be at that lab before use a cloud. That shit looked like it was COVID infested. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, um, for real. For before I let you go now too, you kind of always listen to rap. So what do you guys listen to on a Sunday? Uh, you that, that can't be rap. What I'm like, yeah, it's usually like some old school, like Teddy Pendergrass, Al Green, you oh. know, that vibe, Isley Brothers. I'm listening to old school, like crazy. Okay. Like, do you guys like Adrenaline of Rock? Who? Like Adrenaline of Rock, like the offspring. And like, oh, like- okay. I'm going to tell you, I don't think I've ever told anyone this ever outside of like my wife, maybe. Like, my guilty pleasure is soft rock. Like Whoa. I like I really? like soft rock. That shit is like, and it's the records be smooth, bro. Yeah, yeah. like shit. Chicago and shit like that. I fuck with that like soft rock music. Shit. Like yeah, music. yeah, yeah. Like you just ride to it, let your window down. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That shit like, is like, just it's smooth. Like, you ever seen Back to the Future Part One? Where the, the shit Marty McFly was playing at the end, the end of the fucking movie down there. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's like you? before he got wild. No, no, no. That's that's <laughs> soft rock. In a way. That is it. No, that's a little rough rock. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about like, like, no, listen, no, for real though. I'm talking about like Phil Collins, like one more night. Oh, shit like no. that, like that smooth, like that soft rock shit. Yeah. Mm. They're already screaming your face off like that smooth. Yeah, like they sing and they smooth. Yeah. A hall of notes is considered soft rock. Oh, like they're borderline oh. RB, but it's considered soft rock. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, there's a song I call it. Know, it's that I just listened to the other day. I'm like, yo, this is jamming. Like, yeah, it's from like 70. I'm like, really? I'm like, oh, shit. Is like, Sade, like Sade, for instance. Ah, oh, okay. That would be fire. Soccer. Yeah, that's fire. And then what's the name, man? And I fuck with Queen, too. That shit, oh, that's, man. Yeah, Queen's classic. Yeah, that's man, right. my God. What, what, man. what, what I'll listen to on a Sunday, I'll listen to like, shit, I listen to psychedelic music, man. Like, from, like, like the sixties and seventies, and I mm. listen to like I listen to foreign records, man. Given that I'm a producer, I've gotten into a yeah. I was about to say, I, I got like a like a, a life soundtrack that I have, man. And my Sundays <laughs> would be like, it'd be like Sundays is Brazilian jazz for me, you know. Oh wow, no okay. You know Brazilian That's jazz, or, like on some shit. Brazilian jazz is a mad dope, man. Like since I was a kid, I always had like Brazilian jazz playing in my in my crib, so I always try to keep up that energy in my household today because it's like something that makes me feel normal on a Sunday. Yeah, Yo, man, you made me feel like my man, like in belly when Nas gave the little boy the chain and shit. I just want to oh. tell you, you an ill nigga, son. You an ill nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you an ill nigga, son. That's what he said, bro. man, that's ill as hell. Like, yeah, that shit's fire, bro. And yo, Belly, hey, I don't know why people said that movie sucked. That movie was good. I just don't think they understand like the cinematic view of that movie, like the guy the vision he had. Like, Man, like I, first and foremost, the, the director in the movie was a music video director. Exactly. Wasn't like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's number one. Number two, it th- like you said, that movie was made just to showcase uh, aesthetic, yeah. more so not even the acting, but the aesthetic of hype Williams. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and then another thing too, I like to say with that movie, especially, you had to be there, man. Yeah, that yeah. time, you know what I'm saying? Like, go to the show. It was just uh, that, that ended, was a like, yeah. It was the see movie, what I'm it was saying? The, it was yeah. It was actually yeah. at the movies. Like, it was. I seen it. I big seen it shit. Movie. Like, if you was a hip hop yeah, dude, yeah. I went to the movies to see it. I skipped school to see that shit. Oh shit! No, I promise you, I skipped school. To, I went to see that shit. Yeah, and, and that shit was. And that movie was like one of the movies of the millennium. That, The Matrix. Yeah, because it was 98, that movie, yeah. 
like and, and then that movie that movie Man, and, that's and the timeline of that bro. movie they kind of like fast forwarded from 99 to 2000 in that movie so they were like ahead of time yep. it was like a millennium a yep. millennium movie it's crazy how x's first album wasn't even out when that movie came out there's an interview um there's an interview yep. they did on drink champs where he's like uh x's first album wasn't even out when belly came out i was like what but like I said, um, I've never seen that in theaters before. Damn, I didn't even knew that was a deal. Wow. I tell yeah, you what. You got the double whammy. The second one, but, though, was garbage. X, X, song, X song was definitely out, though. Oh, yeah. His, Get Out Me Go was definitely out. He has songs that was out, and he was doing a lot of features. And so his yeah. name, so, so he was already, he was already out there. So it was like normalized. I don't remember the timeline if 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 it, if that's true though. I don't know. I think his album was out when Belly came out. Cause I remember '98. This guy released two albums that year. Yeah, I remember. You said '98. Yeah, that was yeah. So he was oh, already when, popping. Flesh of my flesh. Because Belly like a was what? Album. Yeah, because Belly was what '99, 2000. I think it was '98. Belly. He really, was Belly came out. Second album, he was on the second album when Belly came out. Yeah, I had a little. Oh, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, so his music was already out. Yeah, he was on his second album. He was like, um, Flesh of My Flesh came out like in the winter time. Okay. Well, yeah, he was already popping. Yeah, so yeah, this, his music, because this was November 4th. So yeah, they don't know what they're talking about on Drink Champs. Yeah, mm. they also, they're, they're nuts. Like, I, like those are and like. November 4th. They're nuts for that one. They should know better. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm in the real. My bad, Norm, if you watch that, but like, goddamn, you know, you got to put down the tiger bone, man. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. That's sauce <laughs> talk. That's sauce talk. That's sauce talk. So, okay. So, Brazilian jazz and soft rock. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check some of these guys out later on today. Because, like, you find yourself finding new music, but after you hear, like, the same Linkin Park album 25 times, it's like, all right, I need something else. Hey, bro, you listen to Linkin Park heavy, like, <laughs> Like, yeah. No, that was like the first name that came up to me. Like, how yeah. many times you listen to Lincoln Park? You said, <laughs> Hey, Pat and Andrew's on the album. Okay, you can't blame me. Yo, I, I used to go to school and motherfuckers used to glorify the motherfuckers. Like, Eminem, <laughs> like, everybody had a real Sim Shady in their school. No, I'm talking about when Lincoln Park did that underground rap album when they had like uh, Black. I remember. Yo, know, I can't get over like the, some Method of the Man was on that shit. Yeah. Like, that's what I mean. Like, and then they just like went to Jay Z. I was like, I oh, I don't know about that click, of course. Mm-hmm. No, I used to hate Jay Z's music around that time when he used to do crossovers like that. I'd be like, yo, bro, it's just ass. <laughs> so, oh, so before we leave now, too, uh, what do you guys think of "Pray for Haiti"? I like that album. Yeah. Oh, um, you talking about the Mac, the Mac Hami shit? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I love did you, it. Did you guys did you guys expect that from like because like I don't know if you guys been in tune? I like that was like the very first like Mark Homme like album like I got to enjoy. But like, did you guys know like you guys were gonna like it was gonna hit like oh that was like that was good like that was really good. See, I'm late to the party. Like, I'm like, just not cool. hearing about Dog in the last couple years, and then, and people were telling me like oh he's been popping for a minute. Like you know what I'm saying? Is that the third? So I had to do my research on him, you know what I'm saying? And him also being a fellow Haitian also helped, you know what I'm saying, his case. He dope, he dope. I'm not mad at him. I mean, he dope. So when he speaks Creole, can you understand what he's saying in the, like, near the end of the album? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm raised, raised in the household. I understand it and speak it. So I don't know it verbatim. I don't know what he said. I'd have to listen to it, then I'll tell you. Go back and tell you what he oh, said. Yeah, I don't mean like like actually like, but you understood like what he said at the end though. No, for sure. And a lot of this shit, he's kind of like he's shitting on somebody because I know that first joint. He telling some. He he basically telling somebody like you a bitch, you bleed uh, like a woman or some uh, shit. Go get Kotex and all this shit. Like he, he's talking <laughs> like real reckless. He's talking reckless in the beginning. So like Coco Santi. Yeah, yo, yeah, like, yeah, it's about the pussy stank and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what he just said. This is it. Sun C, that be, you know what I'm saying? And now that, what he said, that's a slang for the twat, you know? I, I used to live in Little Haiti in, in Miami. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, you know, a little bit. I know he know yeah. a, a little bit, a little bit of Creole, you know what I mean? 
I've got all my friends were Zolpal members, so like, like on some shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I like, already know. <laughs> like real Zolpal, like there are people that that's like, oh, I'm Soul Pal. So I was like, no, I know real no. Soul Pal. Lin yeah, from that's just serious. But like, but like, that's when you grow up with the motherfuckers as kids, and you just, you know, you around, you living in the zone. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. But I learned some Creole out there, man. Like that album was fire. That album was fire, man. It, it, it was like a cultural album almost. Like it was like uh the beats were very elusive. It wasn't like atypical. It's not like yeah. boom, bap, boom, 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 bap album. It was just like it was very elusive. He didn't know what type of bounce he was gonna come with, and it made him expand his flow as an artist. I think you know mm -hmm. I think that's what you did like with like Blue Shell and God now too, because it's like what Bane was saying too. Like he's having fun during these records. It's not like like on Rudy, it was more personal and like you know, but like with this one, it's like he said he had fun with Rudy, but like like you can tell when like with Blue Sean God, like you really enjoyed doing that album. Man, Wavy, his landscape, and I, I told him this during during our you know what I'm saying our time creating it. He makes beats that I grew up liking, like producers that I look up. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like the hardcore beat, like you went like dude. oh my god. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying, like that hardcore. Like he's a, just insane. Like he's to me, he's like the best of every producer I grew up liking. His sound, like he has a bit of P Rock in him, some Riz in him. Um, uh, the dudes Biggie was fucking with with Bad Boy little producers that too. Like you know what I'm saying, he has all that shit in one just wavy the guy. This is just insane, and that's what kind of like took me. He took me them took me there sonically. With with the music he was making, man. So, yeah, man. Wavy is a beast, man. Well, maybe after seeing this interview, more people would tap into Blue Shan God because we don't cover bullshit on this platform. We cover elite, elite rhymers. Elite. And just because, you know, there's going to be a few on beasts and we only cover the elite, elite, soulful, beautiful women of R&B. Maybe a few guys, too. I, I see you, Raheem Devon. Yeah, right. <laughs> bro, no, no word. The line. bro, hit me up the other day. He's like, Yo, I fucked up. Hey, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, Raheem fucking Devon. I, oh, wow. I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm like, the guy who sends on the games LAX. <laughs> That's where you know him from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we built from that, but um. But yo, you guys, you guys are welcome back anytime now too. Um, before I let you guys go, um, for anybody watching, you can pay, um, purchase Blue Shion Guard in the link below. Do you guys have anything that you guys want to leave the public with before I let you guys go? Um, oh, okay. Uh, Blue Shion God is out right now. Head to Bandcamp. Go ahead and cop that. Um, I'm going to draw, hopefully... If I can get myself together, I'm dropping one more project before the year end, before 2022. I mean, 2021 ends. Uh, be on the lookout for that middle finger music. Bang Belushi. Shout out to my man, Ike Tyson. Shout out to the whole middle finger squad. Man. Yeah, so I'd be looking oh, at that too. And what about you, Wavy? Man, like you said, Belushi, our God, is out right now. Bandcamp soon is going to be on all platforms. Soon we're going to have the physicals out following up after that. Also, I got a project coming out with Ace on Eastwood called The Complex. No oh, date oh, as oh. yet, but that's going to come out very soon. And then I'm going to have my project that come out right a little bit right after that. You never know if I might drop a beat tape on your ass. Also, man, i like to give a shout out to my brothers, the Walkers, man. Peace to my bros, man. Yeah, shout out to the Walk. Big Walk, you guys. Yeah, man. Big Walk, man. Like, peace to Middle Finger music as well. Oh, yeah. Word up. Word yeah, up. Yeah, middle Fingers in the air. You have to get y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Walkers, big walk.